And I'm Michael Fresco. And I'm Enrique Sori. Welcome to this edition of WBLN for today, January 29th, 2016. This semester, Dr. Frade's eighth grade Spanish class has been studying the life and history of Jose Martí. This week, Dr. Frade took the eighth grade class on a field trip. This past Tuesday, 17 eighth graders traveled to the Cuban Heritage Collection at the University of Miami's Richter Library. Students learned about Jose Martí's life and Cuban culture. And we went on the 26th of January to the Cuban Heritage Collection at the uh, University of Miami because we're getting close to celebrating the anniversary of the birth of Jose Martí and considering that this is one of the largest collections of archives um, for Cuban studies and research uh, in the United States, and we're so close to it. It was a great opportunity to take some of the students uh, and have them explore some of the material that the collection treasures. The collection preserves and gives access to artifacts and historical documents related to Cuban culture from colonial times to present. The students were able to see some of Jose Martí's original books and pictures of his childhood. She had also uh, put uh, together a selection of personal letters of Martí, first editions of books like Ismaelillo that had been dedicated by Martí himself. The collection is open to the public five days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, please visit the University of Miami website. For WBLN in the Middle, I'm Enrique Sori. This week, the seniors held the annual senior skit in the Roca Theater a tradition that goes back many years. This year, the skit was revolved around for Pedro Suarez, SJ, visiting the faculty members' dreams, including Mr. Cleveland, Deacon O'Malley, and Father Cartaya, just to name a few. Just finished watching the senior skit with the parents and uh, some of the seniors and the other students. It was fantastic. The kids did a great job. There's some guys that really nailed down the, the teachers they, in the way that they imitated them. Uh, I saw no resemblance in my character, by the way. And just for the record, I wanted to say one thing. The cafeteria has only been in the construction for two months, not 50 years. But anyways, it was a great job, and I'm very proud of the class of 2016. I want to thank Mr. Maza, Mr. Dulcedes, and everybody who took an active part in helping these guys put it together. Awesome. In national news, as the Iowa caucuses get closer and closer, Donald Trump remains the Republican frontrunner with a 16.8 lead on Ted Cruz. On the other hand, Hillary Clinton is still leading the Democratic Party with a 15.3 point lead on Bernie Sanders. So the run-up to this year's presidential debate and uh, an election seems to really be interesting. Uh, you have a number of contenders who all have um, some similar and, and most wildly differing opinions on what the best course uh, for America is. On the Democratic side, you obviously have the two front runners, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, who uh, even though they're united by party politics, they are divided in some of their particulars of their platforms. And on the Republican side, um, you have a very lively group of people with uh, Donald Trump leading the pack and leading the polls right now. I think at this point, the, the politics of 2016 and where things are heading toward the, uh, the primaries and the general election are pretty much wide open on both sides. I think the important thing is that we're living in very exciting political times. Regardless of what happens, the run-up to this next election is going to be one of the more memorable in recent years. And uh, it's important to stay focused on the news and current events because things are changing minute by minute. And, uh, and if you're not up to, up to speed on what's going on, you can, you can really miss, um, you can miss quite a lot of stuff. Iowa caucuses will be held on Monday, February 1st, and are an event where voters from all of 1,774 Iowa voting precedents meet to elect delegates to the country conventions. In international news, Leonardo DiCaprio met with the Pope Francis at the Vatican yesterday. The two share a common interest, Saving the environment, according to Vatican Radio, DiCaprio gave the pontiff a book of art from a Dutch Renaissance partner at the end of the meeting. DiCaprio kissed the Pope's ring and, speaking in Italian, thanked him for meeting with him. The, Ca the Catholic Herald reports DiCaprio was a raised Catholic but does not have a religion except for expressing an interest in Buddhism. Hey guys, here's your scoop for today. The chess club will be meeting to end all of next week at 3 p.m. in F208. The Respect Life Club meeting will take place Monday at 3 p.m. in room H204. 
The vocations meeting will take place Monday at 3 p.m. in room I-109. Stay tuned as we bring you weather and sports after these messages. Hi, Belen. It's been a cloudy day today, and let's take a look at today's specifics. As you can see, the area gets very cloudy, and this will go on throughout the entire day. But the weekend's looking to be much sunnier. With a high of 69 and a low of 53, the relative humidity of 58%, and the winds northwest at 13 miles per hour. It'll be mostly cloudy, and the precipitation will be at 0%. Clouds, but no rain. Now let's, take a, let, now let's take a look at the weekend. On Saturday, there will be highs of 74 and lows of 64. And the chance of rain will be at 0%. On Sunday, highs of 76 and lows of 68. Chance of rain, once again, 0%. But on Monday, the tides change, and it'll be highs of 78, lows of 69, with a chance of rain at 70%. That's all for today's weather. All 10 players scored as the middle school goal basketball team defeated Everglades City 71 to 28. Mario Cobo led the Wolverines with 19 points, while David Fernandez added nine points. Sean Bobian, Dorian Gonzalez, and Chris Klemek each scored eight points. The team completed their season with a perfect 23-0 record. To be a part of something that's never been done before, uh, first time here at Belen that a middle school basketball team has gone undefeated, and it's, it's good to know we, that we were the first. The varsity soccer team will host St. Thomas Aquinas in the regional quarterfinal game. Game time is 3.20 p.m. Admission is $7. The stadium will be closed for every other outdoor sport. The sixth grade baseball team is scheduled to play at St. Kevin tomorrow. Belen Jesuit will be hosting the ACC track and field relays. Primary division and sixth grade division will begin at 9 a.m. The eighth grade and under division begins at 2 p.m. The varsity soccer team will host St. Thomas Aquinas in the quarter regional final game. Game time is 3.20 p.m. Admission is $7. The stadium will be closed for every other outdoor sport. The sixth grade baseball team is scheduled to play at St. Kevin tomorrow. Monday, the Miami Hurricanes went up against the Duke Blue Devils. A very talented Miami roster beat an equally as talented Duke roster 80 to, to 69 in a landslide win. The top two scorers were the, for the Canes were Sheldon McClellan with 21 points and Jaquan Newton with 15. McClellan went 8 for 12 from the field, Newton won 6 for 11. Angel Rodriguez also racked up 11 assists, a new career high. That's all for sports. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Romero. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for all the latest news and pictures. I'm Enrique Sodi. And I'm Michael Fresco. From everyone here at WBLN, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and stay golden, Wolverines.